quiet. Maybe too quiet. <laughs> that was awesome man <laughs> that's the coolest intro ever dude right there <laughs> <laughs> you can never get enough of those fuckers man <laughs> you know that was actually an at&t commercial like back in the day no shit <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you fucking fool me man <laughs> dude i stumbled the phone out i was like you've got to be shit this is the greatest thing i've ever seen like oh for sure drop down period whatever dude i was like no nah, this has to be a doc sale intro right right <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah man but um so we're going to talk about priest tonight priest yeah. album covers i thought this would be a good idea here's here's why um like when i was when i was growing up like i wasn't introduced to comics first i was introduced to metal before i was introduced to comics right mm. and um the uh and it was it was Judas Priest, uh, Iron Maiden, Danzig, all these album covers that that inspired me to do artwork before I I got into comics. Then I got in, and now I realized, dude, there's comics like people actually draw shit, like you know, of spite like the cartoons I used to watch and shit like that. So I started getting into that. Yeah, but it, like none of it came close to rivaling the brutality on these album covers. <laughs> oh, <for laughs> you know what I'm sure, saying, yeah. like you yeah. remember the old. Iron Maiden, like a live after death album cover, you know, where Eddie's coming from the grave and there's a lightning striking him right in the middle of the forehead. Just so know? metal. And also EC too, in a way. You know what I mean? Oh, dude, it was it was totally EC. And all these guys, like you never heard of. And then like after I got into comics, like some dude like showed me like heavy metal. We're playing Dungeons and Dragons and shit. Like yeah. well, a form of Dungeons and Dragons. It was called heavy metal. And uh, because this dude that was dungeon master, he was a metalhead, and he used to draw these crazy ass cyborgs. Oh, and yeah. you'd have to roll to get the um, the stats on them. Mm -hmm. And um, dude, it was fantastic. You know, we used to play all this this crazy shit, and I think all of this like kind of kind of formed what I do now as far as my art style and stuff like I that. I could see that, know? bro. I could totally see that. I get that. that you too, as a matter of fact, like with Butch Cleaver, <laughs> you know, because we don't think like regular guys as far as comic art. You know what I'm saying? Like people think of superheroes, they're like spandex, you know, I can yeah. raise shit with my head and stuff like that. We're thinking pull a bone out of your rib cage, sharpen it and stab somebody with it. You know what exactly. I'm saying? Oh. For sure, bro. <laughs> Take a spinal column out and shoot bullets from it because now it's a gun. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, Man, with just your art, dude. Just like the way you put your compositions together, and like you, you, you have your spin on it, man. It's almost like I totally can feel like it's like a metal album. Sometimes I've seen different pieces you've done throughout the years, man. I'm just like, fuck. Well, that that's like what I'm saying. Like a lot of dude. that, people think like like. When I think of Simon Bisley, like the first thing that doesn't come to mind is this Batman and Lobo stuff, although that is part of it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The first first thing that comes to mind is all the Danzig albums he did, you know? Right. Danzig loved that motherfucker's art style. Yeah, it's like, so way so before. You know, I think uh I don't know if did Simon start doing work for 2000 AD before he started doing work for like Danzig? uh heavy metal? Um, uh, like album albums and shit like that. I'm not sure actually. That's a good question. That's that is a good question. I have to figure that out. To do a deep I, dive um, on that. You know who was who was yeah. dropping mad mad fucking um, life. It was dropping mad busy facts like talk like showing Jim Lee was probably aping him at some point. <laughs> like because busy has been around really. For a long time. Yeah, dude. I was like, oh, Bisley has been around for a long He's time. People around, don't realize, you know? dude. Like he was on Bisley. YouTube before everybody too. He like he like came in, hit it, quit it, did a couple docs, his biz TV. You know, yeah. I don't know if you've seen those, but 
they're amazing. I I've seen a couple, but Bisley, like he, the dude just draws. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. he doesn't, he doesn't do anything. Like uh, like if you see him do a YouTube uh like show, what well not show, but like a draw stream or something like that. Yeah, I've yet to see him do like um structure. Like normal oh. artists do, where you draw a circle, you know, and yeah, like he just love to see it. he it's literally takes his pencil and he does this, oh, and man. he's making the skull of a horse while he's doing it. <laughs> like, and it's like it just kind of takes over, you know, like it does. Uh, it's the magic, you know what I mean? And it's like Frazetta too. Like he's also like he's like the metal Frazetta in some ways, you know, of that time, you know. Um, I think I think Bernie Frazetta is like the grandfather of mm -hmm. all of us. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Bigger. Like the the absolute first yeah, person 100%. to ever start doing this kind of crap. Yeah. And that that just it was like a domino effect. Like everybody followed suit, like Horley, Bisley. And <laughs> yeah. there's probably tons of guys that refuse to admit it, but Frazetta, you know, even Danzig admitted it. Danzig said, like, dude, it fucking Frazetta. He was like, dude, that the reason why he started Veronica was so that he could publish Frazetta books, you know? Yeah. And um he said, dude, he said when he was a kid, he had that death dealer poster above his bed and he would look at that motherfucker like dude. every night. Yo. Dude, like whenever I'm putting together, like, again, I'm still learning. I'm green. But whenever I'm yeah. putting together a, 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 a cover or just like fan art, that is the first image that pops in my head, no matter what genre or anything or what. I don't know why. It always just it's just always the death that one iconic death dealer picture, you know? Yeah. So, that, yeah. I don't know because... why. I'm like, get out of my fucking head. I love you. But. <laughs> <laughs> but those those guys used to they used to pump up the brutality to like 11 you know what i'm saying yeah. like oh totally and um yeah that's it was always weird to I, we're going on a total rant about busley right now but it's yeah it's fun it's my show we do whatever the hell we want but <laughs> <laughs> but the deal is is that it it like when i first got it seen busley's work in lobo i was like how is this guy doing comics you know what I'm saying? Because it never fit with anything else that was in comics at the time. You know what I'm saying? Like the panel like was, yeah. He was doing exit wounds, you know, and DC. Yeah. But if you notice, like he only worked for DC at that time, like because Marvel mm -hmm. didn't want to have anything to do with that shit. <laughs> dark. DC's always dark yeah. a little bit, you know. I would say I always thought so too, you know. But mm -hmm. everybody when I was coming up, everybody was like, no, you want to start out with DC and then you want to graduate to the more adult stuff in Marvel. And I was like, what? <laughs> I, I kind of like, don't. Yeah. It's like, dude, no, they got like Swamp Thing, Lobo, Demon. Like they got Edrigan, Blue Devil. Like, yeah. You know, Batman. Everything's like, a dark. demon or a devil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. It's way darker in my humble opinion. Mm hmm. I always thought so too. I think people just associated the Wonder Twins or something like that. But the Wonder Twins, I don't even think they existed in comics until they were in the, uh, in the TV show, you know, like the Justice League TV show. Yeah. Um, or the Super Friends, that's what it was called, or something like that. Um, so anyway, anyway, so we're gonna do this. This is the first show we're doing like this, but I think we're gonna do multiple shows. Next one we're gonna try to do is either Maiden or um or uh uh Danzig or something like that. Somebody with really cool album art. I um I did put a I tried to get Derek Riggs. For the maiden thing to go and interview him while we're doing the show uh derek doesn't do shows like that anymore so mm -hmm. we're kind of screwed on that one um but i, I did put in <laughs> yeah but there's there's another guy that did a bunch of uh judas priest albums and he's also he did a bunch of maiden stuff too he's nice. not well you know but i put a email into him too to see if he'll uh if he'll come on and just talk about it yeah because yeah. i gotta be honest dude like when i was diving into all the album art for judas priest a lot of these guys ain't around anymore oh no shit <laughs> like, they're fucking yeah. dead dude that makes sense you know? yeah yeah these dudes was it 1965 i think they came out 1974 i think it was oh, when uh priest uh first became popular i guess oh yeah you yeah know? and metal and, um, before they were doing like the different style <laughs> Yeah, but um, so let's start at the beginning. So, uh, 1974, John Pache, well, Priest came out with uh, Rock a Rock, 
Wait. Rock. <laughs> yeah. Rock and roller or something. Rock and roller. That's what, yeah. yeah, it sounds oh, weird yeah, coming off the tongue, but it, yeah, yeah like that's, the, like, that's exactly like, what it is. Like a candy or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like a Tootsie Roller. <laughs> that's exactly what it was. It was like a Coke bottle or something like that. <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, let me pull it up. And uh, let's see here. Yes, that's it. So that's the that's the cover for the Rock, Rock and Rolla album cover by Judas Priest. Hmm. And it's super, super simple. Um, and it was a Polish artist that did it. Huh. it was, uh, yeah, John Pache. John, he, um, I think that was the only album cover he ever did for Priest. As a matter of fact, I did a dive on it, but like he, there's, there's not a lot about, uh, about a lot of these guys on here. Um, let me pull up a picture of John to go ahead and uh, show everybody. And was that a that was a painting or a photograph? I mean, it looks like a photograph. No, that, that no, that was a painting. That's, they, that's good, man. That's, that's one awesome. thing I want to make a rule on. Like, um, I don't want any like uh, picture albums, like photo albums, because it's uh, I don't like. I mean, look, it's art, but like that's that's not what I want to show off here. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So this is him right here. Oh and it, you see that, right? You see what yeah. he's signing? He That's also pretty... designed the uh uh fucking Stones, Rolling huh? Stones is yeah, his logo. Lip on a brand, huh? Yeah. That's what he's famous for. He's not famous for the for the Jews priest rock and roller. That's, that's the most famous <laughs> like rock and roll logo right there. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. But, yeah, so I think I think this guy passed away. He's not around anymore. Um this I not I didn't really find that album cover interesting. The one that he did for uh, Rock and Roller. It was I mean it was okay, you know. Yeah. Um, like I guess at the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I guess at the time that's what they could afford. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nineteen seventy six is probably one of the best album covers I've ever seen by this band, dude. And it's fucking insane. And uh, it's uh, Sad Wings of Destiny. The Sad Wings of Destiny album came out by uh, Priest. And it was done by Patrick Woodroff. Mm. Let's see here. And, uh, you know, one thing about comic art and, um, like, being exposed to Marvel, in DC with art from the seventies and sixties. I always thought it was just like really shitty art. Like they weren't that good. Mm. <laughs> you know <what> I'm saying, <laughs> but then you start seeing stuff like this. You right. Know? And then you like, it's like the same thing with comics. Like you start looking at indie comics back then and like the indie comics was blowing mainstream away, but mainstream yeah. was looking for like a more simple look and I don't know. I mean, this is, you got to realize this was before digital. Like these guys are pulling out the airbrush and That's they're using beautiful. a technique where they use, uh, where they use film and they cut like when this guy was doing this, he had to, he had to cut away each one of those feathers with Damn. frisket, right? Oh, and airbrush okay. each one of the feathers and then Damn. go back, tear all that off, recover it with frisket and do the rest of the, the image. Like this oh, was wow. some involved shit. Like, yeah, that's that's crazy, man. I remember I saw I, some inkers doing that too. With um, was it Michael Gla Glapion, the one that does great Capulos? Yeah, he was using that's a lot crazy. of crazy. Like, like, you like, gotta be insane, dude. It's a lot of extra work. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think you can find frisket anymore. Like, oh, really? Shit's yeah. And Damn. what what trips me out too is that Judas Priest, like they're in their new logo, like the, the logo I used on um the show tab. Yeah, like they're using that 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 pitchfork cross yeah. on their logo now. They never used mm -hmm. to use that in the past. Yeah, it was always like in the a razor. Past, it was always made. yeah, it was always like that. that. You know. Yeah. But look on look on the necklace. Oh, there it is. Yeah, and this was back in 1974. You know, That's like one of the and first I, albums, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. This was their second album that they had, yeah. that Priest ever put out. So they were rocking Dude, that like, logo back then. Yeah. I wonder if somebody's seen that and they're like, hey, you know, it'd be cool. Let's incorporate it. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> I wonder if he um yeah, maybe. I wonder if I wonder if the artist like created that that logo, you know what I mean? Like he just put it I was, on there. You know that's a that's a good question. Like I never I never realized I never thought about that. But you're you're absolutely right. I mean, I don't I don't think this guy's around anymore either. Let me find a picture of him. He um Let's see here. Sad Wings of Destiny. Sad Wings of What an awesome name for an album, too. Uh, Priest was a band that was riddled with problems. Rob mm -hmm. Halford was one of the best singers of his right. generation. Um, he's, and back then, during Sad Wings of Destiny and Rock, Rock and Rolla, he was, uh, he was a smoker. Mm. And uh, the, his manager told him, they were like, well, dude, you might want to like, cut the smoking out, you know? Yeah. And uh and he um oh this guy was also a children's book artist. Um so he did. He was like he was like you think it he's like cuz dude if you if you heat that shit up it's going to hurt your voice. Oh, Nobody yeah. thought his voice would get better, like more powerful once he quit smoking. They thought it was just even out or whatever. Nah, dude, that motherfucker got better. You know? Yeah, he did. And uh one thing that um, the band told Rob, Rob Halford while he was with him, and this is one of one of the things that actually broke them up, was that uh, they didn't want him telling anybody he was gay. Oh yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, and uh, of course he had a problem with that. <laughs> that's probably why he left for a little bit, you know. I think that Possibly. I think that's Possibly. absolutely why he left for a little bit during the nineties. They brought in what they brought in Ripper. Rip Nobody could, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, uh, what album was that? That Jugul was on the, uh, Jugular? Jugulator. That shit was yeah. pretty dope, dude. I wanted to talk about that later, too. Um, that, that was one of my favorite albums, my top three. Dude, that <laughs> art on that, you know what's fu <laughs> well, fucking metal. I'm, like the, I'm the jugulator. Well, I mean, we'll get in there, I guess. But, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm because <laughs> there's a story behind that, too, and it's, it's the, it's the weirdest story ever when really? it comes to that album cover. Yeah. yeah. So, this one's pretty basic, but, that's a that's a that's uh not a photograph, right? I can't even yeah. read this guy's name. It's R O S L A V S Z A Y B O. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. I'm gonna take a stab at it. I'm gonna butcher the metal. out of it. <laughs> Ross Law. Ross Law Savable. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. Oh, no. That's the that's the first and only time I'm ever gonna say that dude's name. That's some like and, phantasm uh, mausoleum shit right there, bro. Danzig was a huge Elvis fan. In fact, he Elvis was his idol. Yeah, he's evil Elvis, right? Around these parts, absolutely. That's what we used to call him. Actually, it was evil. Yeah, Elvis. some my some my older sister called him. That's say that's evil Elvis. You know. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with little Elvis around here either. So this is um this nineteen seventy seven album uh, album cover for Sin After Sin, and uh, like. It, it's funny you don't see that cross coming in here anywhere. Like, and like you said, this is kind of simple. I like right. the. Uh, it's got its. I don't know. It's got a. It's got kind of a cool vibe to it though. Like, you it see does. the body in the background over here, and uh, this kind of looks a little cheap though. Like the silhouette of the chick. Right. They there. put a lot in there though. Like it looks like there's a lot of mixed multimedia. Possibly. I'm almost. I almost want to say it looks like they rushed through it. You mm. know, to get it out. Like with the lady, uh, kind of just. Like yeah, that. yeah, it almost looks it almost looks like they cut her out and just yeah. like left there and just painted all around her and then pulled her off and like pulled the frisket off afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. That's not the exit. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Well, a lot of this stuff is production law and art. And with production law and art, like it's sometimes it's the last minute and they're like, okay, we need this like in an hour. You know? Yeah. And you get art that looks like it was done in an hour. You know, I said I was going to put any photo shit in here, but I did. I didn't realize this was a photo. Yeah, well, sometimes, looks like an... sometimes they're good. Sometimes they're not. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, personally, I prefer like a painting, you know, but, you know, sometimes you could kind of, you know, I, I, I guess it looks like an airbrush that. photo. But um, yeah, yeah, totally. This is, you know, the, al the uh, album cover for Hellbent for Leather. Hellbent for Leather. Hellbent. Hell dude. In a side note, I was totally going to wear my leather jacket tonight, but I <laughs> fucking got hot. 
Yeah, it's hot as fuck <laughs> over here, bro. I was like, I was like you know how to say, ain't doing it. You know, yeah, so right, I put no. on a jean jacket. And I was like, nah, this is too hot, too. I was like, hot, dude. <laughs> you have to wait till the winter time and pop, yeah, like, pop, pop the windows yeah. open and shit. For some El Nino, yo. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, right. Right. <laughs> Turn the AC <laughs> down to 55. and <laughs> Yeah, for sure, man. Have your wife complaining to you? Yeah. <laughs> Matt, why's the fucking AC down to 55? <laughs> Get in here and warm me up, Matt. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is by the same artist, though. He actually oh. did. He had a run on album covers to Judas Priest for a while there. You know, and I actually like a few of them. I, but most of them, this looks like a photo, but I don't think it is. I think this is actually, I think this is airbrush. Like, first getting airbrush. Like the Silver Surfer right there. Yeah, yeah, that's what it looks though. It looks like hitting, Silver hitting, Surfer hitting. with a bullet going through his head. Fucking T eight or T one thousand right there, Robert Patrick. Yeah, I think these is that supposed to be a reflection or is that supposed to be like a hole in his eye right there? I think it's some. I think it's like black metal, like dripping out of his eye socket, like obsidian, liquid obsidian. You think a lot of black metal cover artists like get in, inspired from old Judas Priest albums? Or? Fuck yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> I'm sure they listen to Judas Priest, you know. Yeah. Um, well, because a lot of the black metal is like rock and roll, dude. Rock and roll and punk with some fucking, with some fucking goblin esque vocals, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it kind of sounds like to me. You know what I mean? A little bit of nah, with it. some blast beats too, you know. And there's like the one, one. Yeah. British Steel to me, like that was. That was when they really got metal, like for me, you know, like to, to before, like, I mean, obviously it's all metal, you know, we could really start kind of kicking in with that album. Which, uh, which album, album did the Sentinel was the Sentinel on? Oh, I'm not sure, dude. I ain't gonna lie. Two of my favorite songs before uh, Ram It Down and was uh, Sentinel and um, Head Out on the Highway. Mm. Yeah, um, I'm not sure. But I do know that fucking ram it down. I like ram it, ram it down. Like that's when it started getting a, li a little bit heavier. Like you could feel a little Dude, more of like, the aggression in the, in the music that was, was, was with that album. Cause I was trying to listen to their discography um, just to kind of touch up for the show. And I noticed that that's shit. the artist that uh, well, I want to say artist, but it's more like the photographer. That did the, but it's uh, like, that had, it, yeah. it's weird though, man. Like you gotta, sometimes with the, with, with, you know, just music in general, you have to like stand out, you know, and sometimes you got to do and, and with the comic book shelf, you know, you're putting your comic book on the shelf. You want to have a new a cover that's just sometimes it's just basic. That's not something that yeah. that's not something I probably want to do. <laughs> but like, for example, there's this band called Soil Work, you know, and like a lot of the I do love Soil Work, one soil of my favorite bands right in my top three. And like one of their yeah. albums was Stabbing the Drama and it just was all black. It had like three little like kind of like aviator, like red stripes coming a red fist with a knife in it and it's stabbing some fire. And they said, oh, we just kind of did that because we wanted it to stick out. You know, all those just really painted and things like that, you know. But that's why they do it. So, you you know, it sticks out on the shelf. You know what I mean? There's there's nothing wrong with that. Like, there's I, nothing uh... wrong with that every now and then. And if it's something like badass, you know. Now, they're not, you know, they're, they're, the album still sells. They just pressed it uh, two weeks ago and it sold out. And fucking they're putting it on like uh, grilling the drama. They're doing fucking, <laughs> they're doing the grilling, grilling, uh, what is it? Um, fucking aprons of it and shit, you know. Oh, that's awesome. And having fun with it, you know. When I was when I was when I started doing Comic Cons, like this was back in 2012, I think, or something like that, 20, 2011. Yeah, um, yeah. Like the first couple of shows I did, I realized like there was nothing separating me from everybody else doing these shows, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you had these guys doing prints, you know, they had the same yeah. exact black line style that I had, you know, and digital colors and all that kind of stuff. I was like, and I'm looking around, I'm like. I don't find a way to separate myself from these motherfuckers. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm oh. go down in flames, you know. So I was like, right. Then, like, I seen somebody like doing a live, live demo where he was painting, you know, at a mm. show. That's People dope. were lined up around the corner around his booth, right? And I'm like, it's like that's that's got to be me, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Went home, practiced a little bit, and then the next couple of shows I did, I was I would do live demos and uh Fuck it worked yeah. out, dude. Like it oh yeah, dude. Big time. Like I don't know, man. Side helps side you quest. build speed. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, it makes you fucking unstoppable fucking Swiss Army knife. Yeah, but, all um, right. It's like 
I'll put on Bob Ross on like a day off, dog. And I'll like on Tubi. There's a free Bob Ross channel on Tubi. I see that. Dude. Some bacon, some coffee. My, you know, I don't know. Dude, I you can it. learn some shit it. from Bob Ross, son. Oh, yeah. oh, totally, dude. Totally. I try to like, uh, like I'm afraid. Of, I'm I'm terrified of painting. Like one. That's one of my like one of my goals is to learn how to paint someday. You know. That's yeah. My another side quest, real quick. My my goal is to like retire someday. Like maybe like like um France like. Um, you know, Italy, somewhere, Spain, like right on the water, you know, where I get the go meet the baker and I sit there and I paint fucking Frazetta shit. That's what I want to do. <laughs> That's what I want to do. The, Just chilling, dude. You know, honestly, <laughs> to me, paint is the most forgiven form of media. You know what really? I'm saying? Like, yeah, because really? I mean, if you fuck up, you just paint over it. I heard that inks <laughs> are the hardest. They say inks are the hardest one. Um, inks but- well no the inks are very unforgiving because you here's the thing like sometimes you can mix medias up mediums mm-hmm. up right mm-hmm. so if you're going to do that you always want to go first with water and then you want to go over it with oil if that's oh, how you okay. want to do it never go oil first then water because it'll the, the oil will repel the water i made mm-hmm. that mistake um but if you're just doing like regular just paint with watercolor, one of the general rules, which I break all the time, is don't go thick on color, right? You don't want to pile paint on. You want to let it just... That's why most watercolors look washed out, you know? Um, with me, I, I don't follow that rule. You got to be patient. You got to be patient. It's kind of like a virtue with with painting, right? Patience a little bit or no? Seems like it would be. I, I don't know because I attack shit with color. You know what I'm saying? Well, like, yeah, I'm just like, I just it, go though, into you know? it, you know? And... Like where other guys sit there and they contemplate and shit like that. I'm like, yeah. blue and orange work together. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that, man. Like for me, the blue and orange, that's fall. That's Halloween. You know, I also. Well, another like thing too is. Eternals and shit. You know what I mean? Brayton, yeah, Brayton, exactly. Brayton, that dude, that's his, that's his palette, you know. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't spend like, like I was talking to Angel Medina one time and this is. Angel's not a painter. Angel's a, a penciler. You know, you know who Angel Medina is. He did Kiss, Spawn, oh, yeah, all yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. Angel said he likes to wait to the last minute to get his pages done and just like cram it in there because he's like, when he's in a rush, he doesn't have time to think and it, it's yeah. organic when it's coming yeah. out of his head. Yeah. You know? It's guttural too. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's he's like, like, like boom, 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 boom. It's all energy and like it's, yeah. it's primal, you know? No, he I said it's. He said it's more like instinct instead instinct, of technique. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah our, and I've seen Angel's work, instinct. dude. Angel's work is fucking sick. I think it's the same thing with music too, bro. You know what I mean? Like, um, mm-hmm. I think it has to do with overthinking shit. Like, like you're saying, they're like, hmm. You know, like I think sometimes that's not a good thing. You know, I think sometimes it's it's get in there and maybe that 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 one riff. Maybe it's just that one riff. Like you just need to just cook on that riff, and that's that's the, that's the song, dude. Pretty much like that's that's what, like when I used to play music, I um, uh, like sometimes you'd follow the rules, you know, it was like chorus yeah. verse, chorus verse, whatever, and then solo, and then you know, back to it, put a bridge in there somewhere, yeah. Um, but the, the main rule that I had when I when I, I formed the band was one, no covers, you know, two, yeah. Same here. <laughs> I yeah. I never want to do covers. No, like, because I, I mean, and then I'd be like, well, if we one. knew covers, we could go play at blah, blah, blah and make yeah, a little money. Yeah. I was like, Same it's here. like, yeah, but who's going to remember you for playing the best version of, <laughs> right. you know, fucking children of the grave or whatever. I mean, you know what I'm saying? To like, be honest though, I kind of wish we did do some covers. Just, just like, I don't know. I, there's just like a little, you know, sometimes you just want to do things. Cause like, yeah, I know what it felt like, like in retrospect. Well, but we never did. I was like, fuck that. I don't want to do no fucking covers. You know what I mean? Well, with the guy that I'm playing with now, yeah, like I convinced them to do covers because now I'm at yeah, a point yeah. where if you don't have anybody to play with, you, yeah. you play covers. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because yeah. you can play along with it. Yeah. It's fun, you know, throw a couple in there, especially if you do like a spin on something that might be something weird too, you know? That's what I'm talking about because we, we did a version of uh, uh, God's Country, you know, the country song, God's Country. Mm-hmm. And it was like tuned all the way down. It was like, pfft, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fucking heavy. Badass, and I heard, dude. I heard a fucking um, the Devil Drivers, Ghost Riders, um, Ghost Rider, Riders in the Sky. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard that. I liked it too. I thought it was. Oh no, badass. I watched to the end. The fucking whole album is 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 a uh, is their style. Like they, it's called Outlaws to the End, Volume One. 
They got like Hank Williams yeah. the third. Like I don't know if you heard that album, but it's fucking it's dope, dude. It's all country music, but Devil Driver style. Well, That's I was funny. telling a buddy of mine about that. I was like, "Yeah, dude." I was like, "We're we're do, we're going to do covers," and I, I I was trying to get him to sing. And nowadays, you don't need people to like be around you to be able to sing. You yeah. know, like I'll play music with. Like you could do it on like what we're doing now. You know? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. But um, yeah, you could do it all online. And I was telling him about what we do, what we were doing as far as like taking covers and just fucking them up. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah totally, totally. <laughs> And he was like, dude, he was like, I was in a band. We did that exact same thing. You know, we turned everything punk. <laughs> yeah, turned all punk or metal or, I mean, there's so many different genres you could do, you know? Oh, dude, it's a blast, though, when you're doing shit like that. Like, it's like, you know, because everybody knows the song, but then they, they're like, <laughs> you know, that's take not how you play it. <laughs> take a Depeche Mode song and fucking turn it metal or something, you know? <laughs> and there's some there's a dude online on youtube that every he takes every song there is and turns it into a typo negative song yeah oh, i've seen those guys like there's <laughs> so many talented there? like metal dudes dude that like they and can do thing. like different styles of bands and different styles are like here's the beatles singing corn style or here's the beatles, exactly you know, yeah like that what if metallica's you know <laughs> a wolf and man was done hank williams style you know right yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah, dude, it was a trip. All right, let's see here. What we got? Yeah, but but, so, but um, Reese, though, man, it's it's crazy, like how they all the different styles they've had, like like going back and listening to their catalog, definitely worth diving into, man. If you're um, a metalhead, I tell you, I tell you what, when Rob Halford like split from Priest, it was like you realized who Priest really was. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, the identity. The whole, it was like it was Rob Halford, you know, because yeah. Priest was never Priest until they got Rob Halford back, you know. Mm-hmm. But Rob Halford went and started his own band, and it was Halford. Priest, you know? yeah. It was, yeah, it's but like it was Priest. 2.0. <laughs> yeah, and I was and, listening uh, to uh, the second album they did with that dude uh, with Ripper. It was kind of more like Metallica and new metal a little bit. I think it was called like Ballistic or, or something like that. But um, it just didn't sound like Priest at all. I mean, it, it sounded kind of no. cool. It sounded kind of like a like a different band. Like it was it wasn't a Priest. It sounded like a different band. I'm like yeah, this is all right for like '90s like metal or whatever, you know. But it ain't Priest, you know. No, no, um, it was never Priest. You yeah. know, it was. And you realize that, like when, like Sebastian Bach did a uh, interview with uh, Rob Halford. Yeah. And um, and Rob Halford has his own studio inside of his house, right? And he was cutting a couple of tracks for his, his new album, you know, yeah. or his, his his project. And just right there, no vo- no synthesizers or anything, just spit the vocals out. And it was like, you know, and fucking Sebastian Bach is blown away because he sounded, awesome. Rob Halford sounded exactly like he sounds on the album, like live the right in front of you, you know? Like, what's your and, feeling uh, about live, dude? Like listen live? to band, like live albums. What, what's your what's your opinion about that right now? I think I think there's an energy that comes from live al- albums that you just can't get from a regular album. You know what I'm saying? Like I was, like, yeah. Like Drowning Pool. Like I like Drowning Pool. Yeah, but I love dude. Drowning Pool live. You know right. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. 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 And I was I was fortunate enough to be on stage with Drowning Pool. Yeah. Really? Not playing oh. with him. I don't want you to get the wrong idea. No, no, like I was I just remember, on I think stage. I some pictures of you from back in the day with Drowning Pool. Like I was like, oh damn, this one's been Drowning Pool. That was a full. That was like a couple of years ago because I, yeah. I did like I convinced the buddy of mine to hire him for a festival. Oh, you know? that's awesome. And um, so they and here's the thing: like he he only had a, a limited amount of money to hire Drowning Pool, and oh, originally shit. their manager said, "No, we're not doing that for ten thousand. You know, hell no. Yeah, right. And then, uh, and he was like, okay, well, that's all I got. And then he got a call back and they were like, okay, we'll do it because one of the band members, his family lives in Louisiana and he wants to go see him. <laughs> hey, fuck it. Right. <laughs> it was meant to be, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So when, um, I went and I went in the trailer with those guys when they were getting ready and that's when we took the photos. That's um, awesome, dude. And then they wanted me to do t-shirts for him and stuff like that. No and shit. I, at first, yeah, at first I was like, oh, that'd be cool. Fuck yeah. But then I started thinking about it and I was like, well, that would have been cool like in 19, like t- in 2000, mm-hmm. you know, a 2002. You know what I'm saying? Like not Drowning Pool 2018. You know? Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. 
with the first singer and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, or when they had more than just one member that's the original member of the band. You yeah, know? That, that happens or, sometimes. Like, I mean, a lot of time with bands, you know, there's usually just two guys, you know, like if they've been around plus, 20 years, you know. Yeah, because at that time, those guys would have never played a state, a state fair. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know I'm saying that would have been the yeah. last venue they ever played. Right. But, um, but they still sounded fucking amazing. And the new guy, dude, he sounded exactly like your boy. Yep. Like they had a lot of range singer. too. Yeah. I remember they were on the, I remember they were on the Punisher, the Thomas Jane. That movie was fucking dope. Um, yeah. With the style yeah. Yeah. No, they, but he was, he was, it was so cool. It was a cool time. You know, I love that fucking movie. There's, um, I think it was, they got this, they had a, the singer for the live album. They had the singer from Soil, not Soil Work. Oh, but soil. soil. Yeah, I remember yeah. that guy too. I remember them on Hambanger's Ball. That dude was badass, dude. <laughs> yeah, like, he it's was cool seriously dude. badass. I remember, like, do you remember, like, the second resurgence of Hambanger's Ball when, like, Jamie Josta and Rob Zombie was kind of hosting it for a minute there? I it's seen that, but I, I just couldn't get into it. Like, it just wasn't. It, it wasn't, wasn't Hambanger's Ball. Yeah, yeah. But, like, they had, but they had Soil. Like that was because that was like my resurgence, right? Like they, they came on and had a lot of bands that I was into at that time. Um, and, uh, that was one of the bands that was on there. You know what I mean? And, um, yeah. sometimes those fools were fucking annoying, but they, they would, they would put on some dope bands though. Sometimes, you know, like soil work would pop up and flames, fucking morbid angel, um, Haiti. Shit. Yeah. I missed those. Was... Nah, and then they would, you know, they would switch around, you know what I mean? But then it, so got, it wasn't all like new metal that they no, were putting no, on. Oh no, no. Hell okay. no. Cause, all right. Cause like new metal, new metal was like my generation, like the, 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 the tail end of my generation and then my full full was um was was metalcore and then somewhat of deathcore that's kind of like where it fizzled out that was like after me sort of you know i didn't really get I, um, deathcore shit but I, I mean i don't hate on it it's just that was that was my time you know my time was new metal and metalcore like kill switch you know game, shadows fall those types of bands you know yeah. speaking of that like what you said like that was your time you know because all yeah. those bands are around like yeah. I actually think about that when I when I think about myself growing up, you know what I'm saying? When I was a teenager, it was the perfect time to be a teenager, dude. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. my head wasn't full of, <laughs> you know, a phone in front of me or totally, you know, dude. YouTube yeah. and or anything like that. Like we actually yeah, the biggest, I mean, uh, the coolest thing was like getting a guitar, you know, and getting a couple of your buddies and fucking just fucking around in a garage with a couple yeah. of amps, you know. Yeah, that shit was and, dope, uh, dude. I miss that. Dude, you, you had know? the the jackets with the patches on it and shit like that, you know, you just all shit. your metal gear. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You had your earrings in and all that shit. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. It was, it was fucking sweet, dude. Like, I don't think you can capture that anymore. It's like what Danzig yeah. talks about with punk, you know, like mm. 70s punk. Like you can't bring that back. You, know? you have to be there, you know, and there's really like not a lot of that stuff going on right now. Like it's weird, man. I don't know. They try like, it's just not real. You know what like, I'm saying? They like have the, to do something else, right? Like they, they can't be like doing what was already done. Like they got to do something a little different. You know what I mean? And relive what they got to do. Not, not what someone else did in some regards, I think. But you don't see metal heads around anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like, like not too much. Patch no. wearing jackets and all that kind of shit. You know, what very I'm saying? rarely like, dude. Very rarely. Like the coolest part about that was in the eighties and nineties, you know? Mm-hmm. And then when you got into the two thousands, it kind of all just went away. Like, There's a bunch in like Europe, a bunch of those dudes up in like, you know, <laughs> like Scandinavia, no. Germany, and like uh fucking you know Europe. They still rock that shit. A lot of actually. Well, that's what I heard. Like that, that everything like we grew up with, like that's all really popular over there. You know, yeah, they're dude. wearing the patch jackets. They're living you know, that shit. with the it's yeah, fucking lo- it's fucking Middle Earth over there, Doug. <laughs> yeah, I want to go to Vakken. Have you heard of Vakken? No, uh, wow. what is that? So it's Vakken. Um, it's it's a it's a festival. It's a metal festival in Germany, dude. It's it's usually like three days long, dude. And they got fucking tattoos. They got like usually like a hundred bands. They got food vendors. They got people crashing. It's like Woodstock, but fucking it's 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 Middle Earth, dog. It's fucking Mordor. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. check it out. A, 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 it's spelled W A K E Walken open air, but they call it Walken because it's German. But dude, that's like so we're, my we're list, gonna dude. get tickets, we're dude. Get I want to go. go. I mean, me and my wife want to go. Wait until the kids get a little older, but. Dude, Germany is like the number one spot I want to go because they got the they Dude, got they have the- some of the coolest festivals up there too. They you know, they, they got, got the Krampus beautiful. festival. Oh, <laughs> Krampus, that's another thing. Yeah, dude, they have the Krampus festival where the motherfuckers yeah. dress as demons and go around with like kids wow. on their back and shit. Like that. Yeah, yeah, dude, it's nuts. and then they got they got Krampus, they got beer fest, they got the oldest like like well kept preserved Viking village in the world more so than anywhere in Scandinavia. Get out of here! Um, they got right. the Black Forest where they have all that stuff. They have the castle tours with the Rhine. They got Vakken. Um, 
that's just a few things, dude. Like there's so many things they got over there. So like, that's like number one, like I want to go there for like two weeks. So the other, only other place I'd like to go besides there is the, uh, the road warrior festival in Australia. Oh no shit. Where, I never heard of yeah, that. Dude, they, yeah, dude. Yeah. Dude. Google it. They build like the cars from road warrior and then wow. they all meet up in the desert. That's, you know fucking, that's that's some hardcore shit, dude. That's some like fucking, uh, fucking crazy shit, dude. It's like the Max, dude. Fucking Pangea. Remember the Max? Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit, yeah. shit was dope. God, I love man. this album cover, man. Yeah, this is by um, what was his name? I think it was Doug, uh, Doug Johnson. What is what? Uh, what Doug uh, Johnson. What? That pastel and and what, what would you say that is? It's paint airbrush. Airbrush all the way, huh? Yeah, they used uh, airbrush like crazy back. Like the airbrush was the best, but dude, I came in at the tail end of airbrush, and I still yeah. made money. You know what I'm saying? But I never yeah. did all this stupid shit. Like I free handed everything. Um, mm. This, this is, this is what I was talking about right here. This is the epitome of what I was talking about. Like everything is, like, you know, it's it's all plotted out, right? Circles and the squares, airbrush. but it's it's at, they used to take a piece of. Uh, illustration board. An illustration board was about maybe quarter inch thick. No, no, not yeah. that thick. Probably an eighth inch thick. And mm -hmm. um, and that that was the hardest thing to work with because I tried it. You yeah. know, I just I quit. I just, <laughs> I just, you just fuck it, huh? Well, yeah, because every part of that had to be cut out in little pieces, and then you know, yeah, and mm -hmm. it was just a big pain in the ass. I had probably had an opportunity to learn how to airbrush like when I was younger. My brother-in-law had like a, a body shop and he worked for a lot of body shops throughout Southern California and they were doing airbrush. And he was a good artist too. My, my brother-in-law, he used to draw like just really good, man. Like McFarland like style and things like that. And yeah, and they were, they were doing airbrushing and, but I just never, I never got into it. I don't know. I was I always, started again, intimidated, you know, I, I was, that's the <clears throat> one thing that was one of the rules of bond when I, when I decided to get into art and, and do what I, I do is to be fearless, right? Yeah. Like yeah. if there's something new out there, like learn it and do it as the best you can, but do it, if, you know, do it. Don't like shy away from it. Like once you commit to something, embrace it and don't yeah. like, you know. Commit to the bit. <laughs> exactly. Like when I did airbrush, the first first couple of jobs I did, because you got to realize, dude, I'm, I'm intimidated because I'm working on like, that was during the, the height of the chopper, you know, yeah. craze when yeah. people were buying these choppers for like sixty or seventy thousand dollars, you know. American like, chopper was it was it Orange County choppers and shit? Yeah, like, it was just big all over like pop culture world. Oh, dude, it was nuts, dude. Shit. Yeah, and all these builders were making tons of money, you know, because it's not that hard to build a chopper. You know, you mm -hmm. make the jig and you go ahead and you put the you make a frame from the jig and shit like that. The motors weren't that expensive, you know, and then you, you're selling this fucking thing for like $80,000. Um, so anyway, like I had to do tanks and all kinds of stuff like that. And I was very intimidated. Like I would project, I had a projector and I'd go in a dark room and project the image onto the, either a hood or a tank or whatever, and go back and airbrush it from the, from, from the, uh, from the, the pencils that I did on the, uh, from the projection. That's awesome. But after a while I was like, like I was like, this ain't working, dude. This is this is just it's too much in the process of doing this, right? So eventually I got to the point to where dude be like, I want this Phoenix on my hood. <laughs> it's a <right>? Phoenix, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, because they there was a couple of times I had to do real fire and phoenixes and all yeah. kinds of shit like that. The smoke the smoky skulls and shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, dude, I could show you pictures. Anyway, what I would do, I would print it out on my computer, tape it to the to the end of the hood, and just freehand the whole thing. That's right. Dope. Yeah. Just get, in there, just get in there and say, fuck it. You know, well, the guys that would hire me, they started getting pissed. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Because they're like, you said it would take eight hours, you know, and now I want you to keep this in mind. Like I would quote them a price and I was a ghost, right? I'd come in the back door, do it, leave, and they'd take credit for it. You know, I didn't care as long as I was getting paycheck, you know? So mm -hmm. I'd charge a hundred dollars an hour, basically, except I never charged them by hour. It was just like whatever I thought it would take that's how much it would be. Right. Yeah. So I, if they showed me a hood and they're like, I want this on the hood. I'd be like, well, it's going to be $800. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay. So they take my price, bump it up, get paid by the customer. Now remember they bumped it up to make a profit. Right. right? Good. I would go thousand. in. I got so good and so quick 
that I would finish that shit within like four hours, right? Uh, I'll show, dude, I can show you pictures. As soon as we're done with this, I'll show you pictures. They started getting pissed because I'd be like, all right, finish, pay me. They're like, but it, you only took four hours and you got here late. I was like, bitch, I don't work for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, exactly. I'm an independent contractor. <laughs> yeah. Like I did the job. It's like, you know. Yeah. I can't, it's I can't done. It. The customer likes it. Pay me. You yeah, know? It's, and it's that became matter. a problem. You know? People hate Anyway. Man. So this is screaming for vengeance. And yeah. This I love that, dude. Fucking... I love that. Well, this there artist, a... you, you notice like he's got a style going. Oh, all yeah. This. And this one too. Yeah. This is the one prior, right? Yeah. 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 This, and the, which album oh, was this? I love this dog. And, 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 and he he has that really like kind of blocky, like you know, Kirby, Bisley, you know what I mean? Like, I love that blockiness, it's, dude. It's just so it's fucking kinda, it's hit you, you know, he, with the blocks, you know. Like, I don't think like that. I wish I did. No, no, it's it's Bisley esque, but it's very abstract, too. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like extremely oh, yeah. abstract. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's got kind of a Japanese feel to it. Oh, yeah, huh? Definitely. Especially like the shoulder okay. pads and stuff, like the 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 armor, you know, and the look on his and face, then, uh, it's almost like a samurai owning, mask or owning yeah, that. Yeah, it does look like a samurai mask, doesn't it? It's crazy. And then you got the fucking you got the Gatlin guns coming out the armpits and the right tank trench. It's fucking Trids. metal, bro. <laughs> yes, you know what dude. I mean? This is what I'm talking about, dude. When you oh. when you're a kid and this is what you your influences are at the time before you get into comics. You know what I'm saying? Like like, really, like Preston. Hey, would you? Would you read a Would fucking you, com comic about this guy? Maybe, yeah, probably. Like, in fact, probably, I have. Dude. It was called the ABC Warriors, oh, about two thousand AD. <laughs> it was yeah, sick. Dude. Yeah, and then he pumps this bullshit out. I don't even know. What to do. it's like this a, is the Turbo album cover. Yeah, I wasn't really feeling that. Yeah, I mean, I I like it. I yeah. just once you go from <laughs> that and, and then you then go the fucking, to the. Uh, yeah, Defenders of, that's what it is. Defenders of the Faith album, oh, right? Man. Yeah, dude. And, uh, and then you go to the, the Turbo. Like I don't know, dude. Like that. I'm just like, I, again, it like looks that. Like he's holding an ice cream cone instead of a stick shift. Again, and it's like it's like it's that one that's going to stick out, maybe, maybe. But again, we're talking like the 1980s at this point, so there was similar like type of iconography in, um, you know, metal and rock at the time. The colors on this are yeah. awesome. No, that would be on. That would be dope on like a on a, on a black T-shirt. You know, even a white yeah. T-shirt would look pretty cool. You know, you know, it's funny. Like I had a, one of the motorcycles I had to do. It was a Harley, and the guy mm. wanted the uh, Pink Floyd, um, Dark in the Moon, like mm. album cover <laughs> on his on his tank. Yeah, with the triangle. So you know which one I'm talking about. Well, yeah, with the triangle and it like oh, goes to one end and, and the prism. Yeah, and the prism yeah. comes out the other where it's like a rainbow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um. What was the pain in the ass about that is that I had to do it on both sides and make it look exact, right? Yeah, dude. This guy was getting compliments all over the place. Would you believe that motherfucker came back to my house with a ruler and measured each one of the lines coming out the other end of the <laughs> so it was like, oh my God. don't you see like this one isn't as thick as that? I was like, dude, what do you want me to do? <laughs> it's gotta be fist fucking you, bro. Like, get out of here. It's like, are you shit. fucking kidding me right now? It was like, but I dude, ran into it's like I'm a machine, but I'm not a robot. Get the fuck out dude, of here. There was a few customers like that where I had a, I, like, they were just super, super anal, anal retentive when it came yeah. to shit like that. And I was like, dude, you guys. It's like, bro, the human eye, like, again, this is a motor the fuck cycle, bro. Like the chopper, I'm be flying down the highway. They're not even going to fucking, you know I mean? Even well, one of the things <laughs> I liked about doing choppers was that you couldn't look at both sides of the tank at once, you know? Mm -hmm. So you yeah. didn't quite have to match up. It just had to be like kind of close, you know? Yeah, oh, no. like for me though, like I get kind of like it kind of bugs me out when she's like a hundred percent perfectly synced up, and that goes for any type of art, any fucking thing. Like I just I want to see something a little off, like a little off skewed, you know. What I mean, especially with like the human hand and like 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 digital art and stuff like that. I'm not talking AI, but I mean just digital art. Everything is full. So so like, what's the word? Forecasted. Symmetrical. Dude. It's too symmetrical. Symmetric. It's too symmetrical. Yeah. Forecasted and like set up to where it's all pulled back to one vanishing point and like everything just perfectly like like i like a little that, choppiness in there that's one of my biggest pet peeves about digital art too like when i used to use like uh manga studios and stuff because i did digital art before i went yeah. back to doing traditional right it's cool too it's cool i mean but i'm just saying like you know well i mean we could say it's cool and it is cool to a certain extent but then you get the mirror uh 
you know, tool where you can draw an eye on this side and it comes out on the other side too. So you're drawing a face that's completely and perfectly symmetrical, you know? Yeah. Real life isn't like that. Yeah, we don't work you like know? that. We all got one exactly. eye up here and one eye down here, you know? Exactly. And it's beautiful and that's beauty. You know, it's just <laughs> that's my that's my that's my main complaint is that art isn't supposed to be perfect, you know, and right. people yeah. keep forcing. I mean, when you say like something like like this art is perfection, you're not saying that it's perfectly yeah. symmetrical. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're saying that it's it hits the right points in your brain that makes you feel something. You know? Yeah, it's a visual feast, dude, and it's like giving me dopamine hits because that's so fucking exactly. Like that. Yeah, because dude, you can look at any one of Bisley's pieces, and neither, none of those motherfuckers are going to be symmetrical. No, <laughs> and it's and, again, like, and it's big and choppy, and you know, and his his compositions, like oh, and this is it right here. Like this is the one we were talking earlier. This is the one your favorite, this, right? One of your favorite albums, right? Oh, dude. Dude, this is uh, Mark Wilkinson, and this is the guy I put a call into to see if I can get him on here. Because what I want to do eventually is I want to get into, I want to interview the artists that did these covers. Yeah, yeah, and, um, pick their brain. Like, dog. exactly, like because I want to know how they got into this. How? Because yeah. you got to realize, like back then, this was before the internet. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like this yeah. shit, you had to do shit by mail order. <laughs> yeah, no, dude. I, I, I'm or all you had to live them. around. Yeah, you know, the record studio and shit like that. You know, all the artists and tricks, dude. You know what I mean? The the Renaissance yeah. tricks. That's what I'm like. I'm 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 trying to dig up. You know, what I'm talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it's it's crazy because, and back then I was like, how does anybody? How did anybody get a job in this fucking field or even comics? You know, because comics was worse, dude. Like, yeah, like you, um, like if you lived in a different state. Like you had a fucking like FedEx to shit overnight, you know, or to make your deadlines and and then you had to submit and submit. Like to, listen to Todd McFarlane, dude, when he talks about how he used to submit to fucking Marvel. That yeah. motherfucker, he said he used to put out like 10 submissions every a month or something like that. Yeah. And you yeah. talk about three page submissions. Oh, yeah, so a four page submissions. I mean, that's where his quickness came from. Yeah. That's why it. he's like, like, I ain't drawn spawn right now, dog. I drew yeah. a bunch of shit. <laughs> He's like, I put all, I paid my dues. You, know, you guys can bitch as much. I'm rich, bitch. <laughs> yeah. <that's awesome. laughs> I don't blame him though. I'd be doing the same thing. Dude, Ram It Down was like, I liked Priest before because of certain songs like Sentinels, you know, Head Out on a Highway, all that kind of bullshit. But yeah. when, when fucking Ram It Down came out, dude, that first song on there, oh. Dude, it, it hit you. It hit you right it. in the fucking face, dude. <laughs> it was like crazy. Yeah. And I, I don't know if I it noticed was this a big album. change, dude. It's heavier. Yeah. Yeah, you notice that? It's like, yeah, fuck. yeah <laughs> but, definitely. The music got like just a, a little bit heavier. Just, the art you know, changed too. Like, okay. like they hired a new cover artist to go ahead and do their work. And yeah. um, the uh, they also. I don't know if you heard it, but they also did a version of Johnny Be Good. You know? Yeah, I did actually hear hear that one. It's on, yeah, it's on YouTube. There's, a, I think, there's a video for it, an dude, actual like live it. video. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty dude, dope. they fucking killed it, dude. And uh, it, but they used the same artist for the next couple of, actually, all the way into 2018. So they used this artist all the way until they until now. You know, he's until solid. Last like, album. He's he's he's, you know, and this is for me. I mean, I'm gonna be like whatever. To, for me, this is the the my favorite album. <laughs> this is, and I think, and like, uh, I think Painkiller is is their heaviest song. Like I've heard, Painkiller is their heaviest song. It's, and and it's just like, like the way, like you know, I'm talking to my buddy Dave. You know, like the one we got a band with. You know, and I, you know, and um, I'm like, dude, yeah, check out Painkiller. That song's fucking badass. He's his favorite band's Megadeth. Um, he could play all their songs and stuff. And um, uh, one yeah. thing I will say, like, um, with Ram It Down. Yeah, the coolest part about that is his scream coming into it. Oh yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Like, ah! the, the shrieks, yeah, the shrieks yeah, and all that. Fucking nuts. What what you're I really right. like? The... Oh, sorry. No, no, no. You're right. Painkiller is there is their heaviest song, dude, to date. Is know? it? Because I was in, I, I was actually on Razor Fist, uh, um, one of his live streams. Like, hey, I think Painkiller is the heaviest song that Priest has ever written. Anyone, yeah, that's just, what I'm saying. Disagree, like... and nobody, anyone agree or disagree? No one responded. And usually, these people respond. You know. And I've, I've been listening to stuff, and like the only thing that came closer would, would be stuff like on the Jugular album, um, or the newest album they have, which is a uh, 
I think it's firepower. But um, the firepower Tankless, was pretty good. Yeah, it was fucking dope. That's my third yeah. favorite by them. And um, the the just like the the fucking drum buildups in this song, dude, like that, that's, that's, it almost sounds like a drum machine too. Like, yeah, sick, you know? dude, it's just a solid ass fucking metal song, dude. And uh, I love that album cover, dude. That's my favorite album cover too. Like, dude, is it favorite album? That. Favorite sick, favorite song. Son. Um, you see I that just, in the middle, know. like their cross is right there in the middle. Yeah, it's and, like, uh, oh, it I looks like it, they bro. just dug that out. They're like, hey, you remember that cross we used on our on our second album? Let's put it on Painkiller. <laughs> fucking dragon like motorcycle with the blades of wheels and uh, i just love this like saw warrior. blade wheels that this, thing me- is fucking this, this, sick. this metal like mechanical warrior with his metal wings and just like fucking- that's the only thing i didn't like was the metal wings because oh, i was yeah. like why do you need a motorcycle if you got metal wings <laughs> right and it's, it's obviously flying through space with right <laughs> or flying looks like he's them. flying over hell you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Like, cause you see the cityscape like just melting into the lava and shit totally, like that. Like, totally hell on earth, a hundred percent. Yeah. And uh, yeah. but yeah, dude, like that's yeah. <laughs> you see, this is like ram it down was badass. Like the album cover was yeah. badass. Music was killer. Exactly. When Painkiller came out, mm-hmm. you have no idea how many times a young person as a video was trying to fucking draw the album cover yeah, over dude. it in his notebooks at school. Oh and, yeah, uh, for sure. And and I heard too at that time that like when this came out, like they had um it was like a comeback album. Like uh not um basically like there was nothing like like it at the time. You know what I mean? Like the last album was sick, but when this came back, it was just something. Oh, was shit, dude. Yeah, it, just, it just it just hit hard, you know. There was a lot of songs on there, dude, that was just fucking crazy, but none of them equaled like fucking painkiller. Yeah, know? and I think like as a in a band, like and like now, I think your first song, dude, that has to be the best song on the album. Your first song, because that's the one that, well, that they're going to listen to first, you know. So you have to put that in there. Your first, you know. I know, like bands lost a lot of money when things went digital, right? Mm. Mm. But I also think that the consumer got a huge advantage because now bands have to make every song count. Like they can't mm-hmm. just throw a couple of songs on there to be bullshit. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like it used to be like you get a hit song and then every feelings. other song on there be garbage. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I hear you, man. Like I ain't gonna lie. Like there's a lot of bands that like I would buy all their shit and I would fucking love all the songs. Like I got like a hundred yeah. albums at least where I love all the songs. And then recently I, I like, there's some of those bands, some of those bands, dude, I got like 10 albums by them where every fucking song's a banger, like, like decent, yeah. you know what I mean? But now it's like, they'll come out with some shit. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know about that. I mean, like this song's kind of, it's kind of. Well, mess, the problem you know? now is that when they put out a song, they have to really think about it because they're like, "Yeah, okay, is, am I? Did we do the best we could?" Because these motherfuckers ain't buying albums anymore; they're buying songs. Yeah, dude, you know the whole industry, like, the whole industry's changed. Like a lot of bands are talking about, like they're just you know just gonna be putting out songs now instead of records, you know. Um, yeah, and then some bands like In Flames, like love them, hate them, fuck them, whatever. They're my favorite band okay yeah and so like with their their new stuff they they put out vinyl they put out digital they put out cds and they put out um they put they're putting out the cassette tapes so i um all that shit. like there's a few bands like formula 400 and uh yeah. stuff like that like they put out a new album and they got a band camp uh, uh page dude and what i like about band camp is that if you like the music, you just go in there and like pay like 10 bucks and get the whole, get the whole album or five bucks yeah. and get the whole digitally get the whole album. Oh, yeah. Just get it all. You know? And cause I've noticed like, I'm, I'm starting to be drawn to a lot of these indie bands because mainstream bands just don't, it doesn't sound like music anymore. It sounds like no. manufactured bullshit. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Totally. Like, yeah, this is, um, this is another, this is the jugulator. Yeah. Album. This is this from is the Ripper, vinyl. Right? Yeah. Now, wow, this is by Mark Wilkinson, the same guy who did the past two album covers, like uh, uh, fucking Painkiller and uh, Ram It Down. This was, this one. <laughs> dude, this <laughs> was said to be his best album cover, right? I mean, um, it's 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 you know, it could be, you know, you know. Well, when I was when I was looking for this, like for for reference for the show, um. One thing kept happening, like every time I went to the CD, hmm. you know, it was it was fucked up. 
Oh, really? Like it was it was really fucked up. Like here, check it out. Like this this is one that somebody cleaned up digitally. But huh. like in real life, the CD wow. cover is bitmapped. Like it's in every every copy that was printed of the CD cover was seriously bitmapped. Like mm. you can tell on here, like it, it's been blurred out and sharpened and blurred out and sharpened. That's why it looks the way it looks. I I almost want to say like the artist decided not to give them rights to it and they stole it, you know, mm. because otherwise why wouldn't he give them a high res version, you know, <laughs> yeah. or some, or whoever was putting it like doing the, uh, the graphic design for the album, uh, he fucked up and he sent the low res version to the printers. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So every one of the CD covers was bitmapped when it was published, like ro low resolution bitmap, which is and a then, shame because it's so good. And then the, the yeah. record is the full, the, the vinyl is the full picture, right? He's like coming out yeah. of the sky and burning the yeah, hole in the, the ground. Yeah, that's the full one right here. Um, and uh, dude, it's so good. Yeah, I, and this is probably my second, probably my second favorite uh, album by them. Um, I really liked it, and and uh, that Ripper is very talented. Uh, he one thing I can say about, yeah, one thing I can say about this is this is this is the first album I'm looking at where they haven't relied on airbrush for the for the whole piece. You know, because you can tell like it's not all airbrush. Like he actually went in there and painted like mm -hmm. in watercolor and shit. Like I'm gonna that. say, is that watercolor or what? It looks like, I mean, it's it's hard to say. It might be oils, but mm -hmm. the only thing I can say for sure that's airbrushed is the background, like the sky. Yeah. But everything else looks like it's been painted, you know? Even, like, down here, you can tell, like, in the uh, rocks. Because, I mean, it's like he just cut loose. He was like, nah, fuck you guys. I'm going to do what I want. <laughs> you know? having some fun, dude. Yeah. It's a badass character, too, you know? You can, like... It is. <laughs> And he's totally like a, a Judas Priest character. He's got the leather and everything, you know. Dude, this is this looks like a heavy metal character. Like they sh they should make a fucking yeah. whole story surrounding this character. The Jugulator. Yeah, totally, <laughs> man. It just rolls right off the tongue. Yeah, right. With right a little flicker of blood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the music and then, uh, was a little different too on that one. This was a pretty good album too. It wasn't that bad. Like, yeah, Retro Retribution. It, the, I mean, this is by this is by the same guy, like Wilkinson. But I don't think this this one isn't as good as the rest of. Them. Not in not in my opinion, anyway. But this does look like that angel that was on a painkiller album. Oh um, yeah, definitely. Like kind of uh, like a two point yeah. sort of. Looks like cross between the angel and a pinhead. You know, right, like pinhead <laughs> from Hellraiser. Totally, dude. <laughs> a Cenobite. What do you think of that new Hellraiser movie? I hated it. Yeah, I hated it because one, I didn't mind like Pittenhead being a chick, you know, or anything like that. Because I think in a book she was a chick, like yeah, she was a yeah. chick, right? But they tried to add color to the Cenobites. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, I don't know if I like that. You know, mm -hmm. I like them being black and white. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, I I, I like them. The, the I thought the movie was pretty cool. I like the first one and the second one the best. Um, yeah, yeah, no, those were about the rest of them after that were just the money grab, and it just never worked out. And I would say what the trips me out for that three, maybe, but I agree what with trips you me out on the color. That it's, it's it's 20, what are we in 2023? And they they can't rival those first two movies that were made in the 70s, yeah, dude. Like, and they got to rebrand and just remake new shit. Like, nobody wants to make new movies, like new IPs anymore. You know, I'm, I'm all about making some new IPs, you know, like exactly that's what I'm about, on, too. Dude. But if they're Dude, if you're going to, I mean, you got to realize like these guys, like every effect that was used in those first two Hellraiser movies were done traditionally. Like they were yeah. literally pumping blood through people, Dude. you know, fake blood with tubes and all that shit. You know, that first, I mean, like to be on, I mean, okay. So like the first one, the second one, the first one is just like, the, the best. The first one's just the best. Oh, absolutely. You know, like he's up in the attic and like the whole scenes where he's just like, you know, coming back together and all the blood, like you're talking about dripping through and it's reanimating him. Like just, oh my God. And it's just like reverse footage and all like puppetry, uh, pu puppet, puppet, puppeteering, and you know, yeah, just just the 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 brilliance, you know, and like they don't they don't do that anymore. Uh, in Dude, in part of, two like where they went to hell, you know? yeah, that's what I like. And it's about this it. giant maze with the Leviathan <laughs> yeah. up in the sky. I was like, yeah, 
Dude, there's, there's no digital layer. Like you can't, no. you can't make something better than that now with all your digital effects. You know? Yeah, no shit. And dude, they were going to make a, a TV show where it was going to be Hellraiser, but Game of Thrones. Yeah. All in hell. All in hell. I'm, well, I don't know if you remember that, but there's you know, like I was image of on, on Google. I would I would totally be down with that if they did it right. I don't trust them oh, yeah. to do shit right nowadays, to be quite honest. Yeah, I, don't um, want to, I actually don't want them to do anything for like 10 years. You know? I don't want them to do anything. I want them, I want them to start hiring talent and not people they know that can work a computer. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because yeah. it's not whatever they're doing isn't working. Yeah, get know? some bigotures. Let's 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 paint up some backgrounds. Let's get some people dude, in some in some suits. Let's let's hire some animatronic people. You know what I mean? Let's I don't get some know smoke. If, let's get some mirrors. Like you don't really have to do everything digital. Like Maybe you raise exactly. some wire, you know. But I don't know if they're if they have talented people working, but they're making movies by committee, you know. Oh yeah, and totally that's why it's turned out so bad, you know. Or yeah, it's all sanctioned. Know, but, and, you know, even Oscars, you know, you have to have like a whole like just from the acting point of view, you got to have like check all these boxes of like diversity and whatnot, you know. Like there's this Danish, crazy. There's this like Scandinavian it's, film with Mads Mikkelsen out right now that's like pretty popular. And they're like, oh well, there's not enough diversity in your movie, so it can't get an Oscar and. That's shit. fucking stupid. Yeah, and they hit him <laughs> up. And, he, and that's Michaelson's like, I don't know. I don't I think he was just like I think he kind of blew him off or some shit. I was trying to read an article, but it was a fucked up link. But yeah, man, like the 100 percent committee, and just like I don't know, like I eventually that's what like, they said about the Morbius movie. You know, like yeah, Marvel. I, I was looking forward to Morbius because I was like, did, did you get Jared Leto in it? Yeah, I did. It was terrible. Yeah, they like, said, because Jared Leto's short, right? And there's nothing wrong with being short. Mm-mm. And uh, they they had Doctor Who playing the bad guy in there, right? And uh, yeah, yeah. The one thing they kept doing, I thought it was really fucking stupid. Like when he turned into a vampire, like he would instantly turn into a vampire with fangs and everything, and then be gone instantly. Yeah, and I was like, that's no the pain. worst thing ever. Why would you do that? <laughs> there's yeah. no transformation. It's just yeah. no vampire, drama. Not a vampire. Yeah, no suspense. <laughs> like like a light switch. For, for well, me, no transformation. Like, it's like it's yeah. like if somebody turned into a werewolf, they, a werewolf, not a werewolf. You know, like hitting yeah. a light switch. <laughs> yeah. For, for me, what what would turn me off, like, because I I really like Morbius, dude. I liked him from the cartoon, even me too. You know, yeah. And I, I and I always wanted to get the comics. You know, I always liked the the the, the iconography and the you know the, the 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 pictures. I always wanted. There was always so many books too as a kid. Like, oh, I'm gonna go back and buy that, and I never did. And I'm here. I'm an adult. Yeah. I gotta go back and buy those. You know. Um. But with that character um, in the in the movie, his his face it seemed like when he would turn into a vampire, it would be CGI makeup. It would CGI the vampire. It was. It was all face. CGI. So and, it reminded me of that show Grimm. With it, like you know, I'm like, oh, I don't. Oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly yeah. what I remember. Stop CGI fact. and the makeup on of people like that shit really makes me mad. Like it, like it, like kind of turns me off. And it's it's not hard to fucking to like tape somebody's nose up, you know, to do the fucking. No, movie. no, it's not. It's like, the easiest fucking makeup job. So why would you do that to? I don't know. So it's like that's what uh dude you saw Demeter, that, right? Yeah, I heard you talk yeah, about Yeah, dude, Demeter. I did. But that's what I was telling Brian. I was like, dude, you, they're they're leaning way too heavy on CGI. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But they're also letting people dictate how they make movies, you know, yeah. like investors. And these guys don't know shit about it. They're just trying to impress their wife or girlfriend, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you see yeah. that part right there? I made that decision. <laughs> yeah. You see where Morbius looks really short and and dumpy? That was me. <laughs> I, did. I, thought I thought it'd be cool. Did you like? So you like the really? meter? Though. You like you like the meter, right? A little Dude, bit. Dude, that was fucking brutal. It was dope, right? Like I, I liked it a lot. That. Me and my me and my homie went and seen it, you know. And I was like, yeah, let's go watch this movie, dog. So we went we went and watched it, and um, like there was there there was scenes that like, I don't know, some of it looked like CGI and some of it didn't, but I I liked that he was a fucking monster. I liked how he like kept exactly changing, he kept changing yeah. through the whole movie. There there was some there was some scenes where. You had you guessing of like if it was CGI or if it wasn't, you know what I mean? You know, and, one part, like one of my favorite parts of that movie is where the uh the asshole of the crew, right? He's on deck and he's doing yeah. his rounds and he sees the vampire like in the shadows, like crawling on the ground like he's wounded. Oh, oh yeah. You remember dude. that yeah, part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, it was dope, dog. It and was he was like, like hey, what the fuck? And then like the vampire just kind of gets close enough and he just like, leaps oh, and slices the dude's wow. through. You know? Yeah. It was yeah, fucking dude. sick. He's dope. <laughs> yeah. and he does a little, he does like a little smile in one scene where he's just like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then he said, like, cool. yeah, when he was, when the guy was crawling up the, uh, whatever it is, you know, the, the yeah. fucking, I don't know, the rigging. The rigging. And yeah. he looks, he's like, oh, God, help. And he looks down and the guy's like, yeah, God help you. 
it's like yeah. running up there. He, after. He says little liner, one little one liners. He did the fucking Ben Affleck. He's like, the dude said something to, to Dracula, and Dracula's like, "You will." Like, yeah, <laughs> like, I remember yeah. Superman. But there was this dude, one that was scene. cool though. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, it was it. Was yeah, there was a one scene though where it was like when he was when he was about to, spoilers, he was about to eat the kid, and it was he was in full makeup. It wasn't CGI or nothing, dude. And he just looked really? over at him. It's full like Barlow Nosferatu scene. Um, where he was just standing there and he looks over at, you know, and they're trying to bust into the door because he's in the, he's in the, the captain's, um, uh, uh, you know, cabin or whatever, you know? Yeah. And he looks over at him and he's just in full makeup and it's just this big Spanish dude that plays him. He plays a lot of the, like, he's in a lot of the horror movies now. He always plays like, he's like in Slender Is that Man. the dude where he's got this weird body? Yeah. Like his dude. arms are super thin? Yeah, yeah dude. Because I got him in my morgue file, right? Yeah. Because I, I keep like a morgue file of different body types. Oh, okay. And his okay. was the craziest body type. I was like, yeah, God, I gotta put this guy in my morgue. Yeah, file, you know? and that fool's down as fuck. Like he was in, in the the new. Huh, he, I, I say he plays Eddie from Iron Maiden, but he, he was in the new like the he was in like the last Insidious three. I don't know if you yeah. saw that one where that dude was like looked like Eddie from Iron Maiden. He had the key finger. It was sick. Yeah, that was That's awesome. Him. That was him. That. And he um so they hired him. Well, he, he usually plays down. monsters because they monsters. can they can yeah. like decorate this dude any way they want. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and he's just gonna look sick. And he's like, I'm down to play Dracula. I don't care what fucking who's doing the movie, what IP it is. Like, I'll play multiple yeah. versions of Dracula. That's what he was saying. I'm like, this fool's dope, dude. Dude, and it was down. badass, dude. And yeah. I, I like the ending too. I like the ending when it was up in the pub. Um, oh, like, dude, that was badass. Like, it was like, so was like cool. the black and white Nosferatu movie. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, you could tell they used a lot of inspiration from that. Yeah. Yeah. Fun yeah, fact, though. Um, I don't know. You probably notice because you're a horror movie buff, but I don't know if a lot of people notice. Like at the end of Freddy versus Jason, you know, um, when there was supposed to have a fight in hell, right? Yeah. And at the end of the fight, uh, the pinhead was supposed to come out and say, now let the games begin. But they cut that scene from the end of the movie. Yeah. You I, didn't, know? I didn't even know about that. I think, I, yeah, I think it was, I heard that was like in a script or something, but I don't know if they filmed yeah. it or not. No, they never filmed it. It oh, was okay. like they were, it was planned to be filmed, but they cut it from the, like you said, they cut it from the script. And because there was supposed to be a part two of Freddy versus Jason versus oh, Hellraiser, Ash. you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. And they never, dude, it was like, that was like, people, dude, they, they, they could have just wrote their own checks at that point. You know yeah, dude. Like, like people would have like crowded favorite. to the theaters to see that shit. Like that's my favorite Freddy and Jason movie. And it has the best metal soundtrack of all time, dude. Like, yeah. Like it was so fucking good. And like the end of that movie, like it was too good. Like we didn't deserve how fucking good the end of that. No, that, that no. Action. I thought it was full it was crazy. Harry fucking comic book. Monty <laughs> Python, dude. It, it was so fucking good, dude. I, I love that movie, man. Um, well, that's one of the reasons why I used to like the old Freddy, uh, like the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, because Freddy yeah. Krueger was like Bugs Bunny. He was like a horror version of Bugs Bunny. You know totally, dude. Saying? Totally. <laughs> like, and especially as the movies clicked on, like the first one, he was terrifying, bro. Like for me as a child, but like later on, like the, I, I don't know, for some reason, like I got to watch the first one, but I didn't get to see this, too many of the other ones, you know? And then, I, and then he became into Bugs a lot more, you know, like he's in the video game and, you know, like. I think uh, the first movie's are always like the most horrifying, you know, the yeah. scariest, you know, but after yeah. that, like they kind of free it up a little bit, you know, like, have fun. Yeah. Yeah. That one's it's, like, for me, it's, it's the first one, then it's new nightmare. And then it's Freddy versus Jason, but I like, yeah, Freddy Jason's on new now. I like this cover too. It looks like it's digital, right? No, just, I don't know. You see, now you got me thinking like at first <sighs> I thought it wasn't, but this was created in 2014. I so think it's, it's very possible this is digital. Like for me, my gut says it's digital. This is definitely digital right here. The fire. And it, you know what's fucked up, dude? It's like now, like, you know, now, like, like if we had Mid Journey, we could do this, right? And it would look pretty cool. Yeah. It's, isn't that fucked up? What's that? If we had what? Like AI art programs, like Mid Journey. Like we oh, could. No. Like, like on, those, those programs are cool, but I guarantee you, like, a lot of these old school guys, they don't completely go digital, right? I think what he did is that he did oh, okay. like the outline in yeah. in ink and in, uh in, uh gray tones. Yeah. Scanned it in and started painting it. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. that's a definite black line on there. And if you notice, like on the ends of these feathers, there's not a lot of blurring going on here. Mm. Like he tried to blend it or anything like that. You know? 
the yeah. only thing he did, it looks like what he did was he just started dropping in like a uh, fire and he did this landscape as like a photo, like a photo mm. insert. Yeah. Which is like what modern inter- comic book colorists do a lot, you know? Yeah. For the backgrounds. But, yeah, exactly. Like, I think all of that is, is definitely digital. In fact, I know it is. Like, I'm looking at it. It's definitely digital. But as far as the character himself, I guarantee you he did that traditionally. Like, did the it outline cool. at least. It looks looks yeah. dope. It's metal as fuck. I mean, it is what it is, you know? Fate salvation is leaving us. <laughs> See you later, Fade, man. Take it Thanks easy, brother. Bye for the first show, bro. We are getting late on this, but I figure it's going to be late, especially with these bigger bands because they got album covers all over the place, dude. And I love this album bit. cover right here. That's the artist right there, Mark Wilkinson. Oh, and, I've heard uh, of him before. Yeah, he did. He did some stuff for Iron Maiden. I put a call in to him. I want to see if he'll come on. You know, at least one of these guys has to come on. Yeah. He also did this one, Firepower. Yeah, I love that album cover, dude. <laughs> just dude, this album cover is sick as fuck, dude. Look, yeah, <laughs> it's goddamn nuts. Just dumping, just dumping you know. <laughs> and the album's cool, dude. That's my third favorite uh, Priest album. I don't. It is. It is what it is. Like, it's pretty heavy, dude. He gets down and like uh, he like allegedly like kind of lost his voice a little bit, you know. Um, and, yeah. and on one of the, a few of their like newer releases, you know. And now it's back. Like this is the last one they did. I was, and I was like, damn, he got his fucking shriek back, you know. Um, yeah, they're also using that. Uh, yeah, look, they started. Inco- did they do that on the last album? Did you notice that? Like using the cross in their logo. Oh yeah, they yeah. did. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You see something? Yeah, they started using it, it every now and then, switching it up. They started it. Yeah, they started using it right there too. It's, they did it upside down. Got on the forehead a little <laughs> bit too, huh? Yeah, look yeah. at that. That's badass. God, that's one of my favorites. Dude. That's so. Badass right there. It is. Yeah, and the, al- the album is pretty like the the song structures too. It's 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 pretty um ambitious the way that they set up the song, like just the way that they're written. You know, they're almost progressive yeah. for like uh, in some way, not not fucking like prog or nothing like that. But I mean, they switch it up a lot the songs, and they're not like you know how we were talking about verse chorus verse chorus. It's not really like that so much. I've known I, from when I listened to it one time, I was like, oh, this is a little this different. is this is a good comparison actually. Yeah. To, uh, So this was completely this was uh, completely done traditionally, and this is completely done. Di- well, almost you can see the difference, right? Digitally. You can see the yeah. difference, right? Um, what, what's your stance on AI, uh, Preston? Art? It's not it's not real AI. Well, I mean, it's a program, right? That that you just put. It's a program. Into. Yeah, it's a program that's not. I mean, come on. If it was real AI, the government would shit that shit down so goddamn quick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we need no machines thinking around here. What's your, but, what's, um, your, what's your opinion on it in the, on the program, like Mid Journey? It's stealing is what it is. That's all it is. You know, it's going around. Right? It's, it's yeah, dude. It, they're taking a little bit of me, a little bit of you, and a little bit of everybody else, and they're throwing it all together into this big collage until it forms something new, you know? Yeah. And that's why they're getting sued. You know, if it was real AI, then they wouldn't be getting sued. Right. Know? No, like, yeah, it's just a program. Um, yeah. I think... Uh, well, there's a couple of things I'm thinking, but like, I still listen to like your boy Zach's videos and shit, and he's all like fucking full force, like AI art, oh, like all about it, right? Um, of course he I'm, is, because they ain't got to pay for it. Exactly. I love you too, unhinged, Jason. <laughs> Jason, uh, yo, what's up? Thing, chat. Thanks for coming by, brother. Um, but uh, he's just saying like, you know, you got to get on board. It's the way of the future, you know. Um, no, it's not. But, it's but the way for of me. It's like keep it's going. Like, it looks plastic and rubber. Like I've noticed, every, like it looks dope. A lot of it looks dope, but it's like plastic and rubber. You know what I mean? Like it, it looks like plastic and rubber. A lot of it, you know, like yeah. unless you're going full black and white. At least that's the way my eyes, like my eyes, see it. Like yeah, that, that looks like a piece of rubber. Like I can just like kind of mold it. Or, like fuck with. I don't know. It's weird. I mean, obviously they got the fingers like they're all fucked up and mangled and shit. You know, but um, you know, there's, saying, there's the thing. Make the whole comic, you know, eventually someday. Well, they, they, who knows? They probably already are. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And that's where all the shitty art from Marvel is coming from. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing: like, you do you know why like antiques are so popular? Because they're so rare. May yes, a little bit. Another thing is that people want something that's real. It's handcrafted, you know? right? 
they want something original. organic and that's real and that hasn't yeah. been pumped out by a plastics factory you know? exactly dude that's that's and, how um, i feel too man 100 percent. so you start looking at art that way too right like you look yeah, at dude. so-called ai art which mm -hmm. there's no such thing as ai art you know what i'm saying like this isn't this is an ai this is an art sampling program that it uses yeah. to go and put in a, a big blender yeah exactly blender. and like it's i don't know dude because here's the thing like if it was real ai then it would have style and technique yeah, you know what i'm soul. saying it would have a soul yeah like it would be a and then form you wanna, of artificial intelligence Right, you have to be you know, in intelligence, not a program. Who really didn't care about AI until it affected them was actors. Yeah, right. Now, now they're fucking screaming from the top of their lungs, "Don't use yeah. my face!" <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Fuck that. I'm shit. dying. Fuck you. Exactly. <laughs> and <laughs> my kids, money, motherfucker. But you got to see it that way too. Like, I mean, yeah, Zach's saying that. Like, he's uh, like, get on board with the future and all that oh, kind of for shit. Sure. You know, and like, I, I listen, I listen, to, I still watch his shit. You know, like, like. You know, that's how I found like the movement shit. So I'm always going to be listening to this fucker, yeah. you know, Zach. I don't listen to them. Zach and him too much because but, too, uh, well, he's Zach, still trying he, to he do just, the political he, bullshit. Zach you know? doesn't, he actually stopped. He's only dropping he like really? one video. He finally stopped. He dropped like, oh, he's okay. dropping like one video like fucking a week now, dude. Like not even that much, which I'm like, all right, cool, man. Um, well, fucking, uh, but he was saying that. And I, I dropped a, a, a comment in there. I'm like, what if there was a movement, you know, like fucking where people just uh, made, art by their hands you know and they had to order the or comic books by hands and then they had to fucking yeah. order the comic books from like a fucking catalog or off a website and nobody's okay what if the wave the, wave of the future the and this is another thing too this is this is affecting writers too because yeah you know you got chat gpt what if um is that the wave of the future or are we just going to take the human element out of it completely and we're just going to instead of zach writing comics we're just going to have chat you know, GPT like write comics and then have AI do the art. You know what I'm saying? I mean, what what does that say about you know what I'm saying? Where's the creativity at that point? Yeah. You know? Well, I was just saying, like, what if what if we just made comics and you know we we people ordered them from a fucking magazine or off a website and we didn't really show all the art from the comic. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it was you had to buy the comic to see the fucking art. You know what I mean? Because as <laughs> soon as you start putting the comic like promotional shit up there, maybe you have like three actual fucking images from your book. You know, I mean, you're not flooding it with images and it's just, it's just, you know, it's not in the Google algorithm and then people can't take it for mid journey and whatnot. You know, you, you got a whole grassroots mo uh, resurgence movement of, of comic books where people actually have to fucking order it or buy it from your website and they have no idea what it looks like. Really, you know, I wouldn't, so I wouldn't buy flipping. those, I wouldn't yeah, buy those comic. <laughs> no, <laughs> you have to see more of the art, huh? I would, because that's, that's what, that's what hooks me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's mm -hmm. like, I see. I see a couple of panels. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm back in that, you know? Yeah. But like, I, it just, it, it really amazes me that Zach gets, is willing to get behind something like that. Oh, and yeah, the only thing I can see is that he's so cheap that he's like, well, this is going <clears> to <throat> increase my bottom line or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, cause you ain't got to pay a computer, you know, yeah. it just does it. I just, um, I don't know. That seems like it almost feels like, like you're being stabbed in the back a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. <clears throat> fight for creators' white rights, but then take away the creativity out of the creation. Yeah. For me, I'm just like full stop, like fuck AI and it's dirty asshole. Um, I don't like in or however you want to call it. I just I'm <clears throat> compiled art, you know. I'm just totally about yeah. organic human wild art. <laughs> Always said, dude, like if it's really if it's good, people are gonna buy it. You know, mm -hmm. like you can have mm -hmm. a thousand projects out there, but if yours is really good, right? People are gonna ignore all those other projects, go straight to yours. Yeah. You know? Yep. And you just and, gotta uh, put out the art. You know, like for you, you like for the last like few years, man, you just put out some fucking killer art. You know, and like people love your shit, and you got your own voice, and um, you know, man, you're not out fun. there fucking, well, you're not out it. there like fucking saying shit or nothing, really, dude. You're just fucking grinding and putting out killer shit. You know, and people respond kinda, to it. But it does work on your head a little bit too. You know what I'm saying? When you're behind a desk all the time and you're fucking cranking shit out and you're watching other yeah. people like, yeah, like chat and, this yeah. shit and then you don't get to do it because no, you're you gotta in the middle have, or something. You no, know? yeah, yeah, you gotta have that that balance and shit. You gotta break out a little bit. Yeah, definitely. That's why I've been do. doing this kind of crap. But, oh, for, fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's the boy. That's your boy right there. And he did a ton of fucking Iron Maiden art. Yeah, you can see some of the Iron Maiden shit in the background over here. Um, dude, that's I really want to interview one of these guys. I have to yeah. know like what it's like. So oh, like, man, there's so many. There's so many cats we can hit up too, man. There's a lot of them, and there's some. There's some like, there's some cats that are like, you know, that have put out some epic fucking albums that have sold millions that, dude, that a lot of people yeah. don't even know about that we could hit up, dude. Like, I'll, I'm gonna start looking for these fools. Like, one of the I'm, I'm talking metal them alone. You know what I mean? One of the guy guys uh, I was gonna do a, a thing about, it, but he was actually a friend of mine. And he died. Was the Kiss artist uh, Ken mm. Kelly, and um. Yeah, we all we hung out with Ken on like at almost every show. Whenever he was there, we would hang out with him. Um, that dude did some incredible fucking art. He told me a story about um a guy came to him and said, "Yeah, did you ever see the Kiss Love Gun album cover um, or the Destroyer cover where they're on top of the mountain and they're?" I think so. A long time ago. He had a guy come to him, and this is before Ken realized that he was popular. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's like, so $500 and you do me a small painting of the actual painting that you did for the Love Gun, al gun album? He's like, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> so he went home and he did it, and he's like, I'm never doing this shit again. <laughs> he's like, it wasn't enough money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally, man. You know, it's like you got to find that, uh, I don't know. That, that 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 ground right yeah there's like if unhinged if you can get in touch with him send him my way because i'd like to do a a piece on him and uh just have more to talk to him about talk to us about his uh the stuff he did for flyers and you know and the local bands i'm i also have a friend but i don't think he'll ever come on this show or any other show because he's really a recluse is uh alan yeager Alan used to do all the art for the Misfits back in the day, you know, mm. and um, T-shirt art, all kinds of stuff. And right now he's doing Skinny Puppy and a bunch of other bands. Mm. And I have a couple of his posters. Well, I have the Rob Zombie poster he did, you know, but yeah, he's he's not coming on here. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's, too, he's too much into uh, just being a, a loner, you know, quiet. Yeah, you know, and that's that's I don't want to be like that, and that's that's one of the reasons why I'm doing more of the streams. You know, coming on a horror show with you guys and stuff. Like oh that, fuck yeah, man! You know? Because oh uh, yeah, yeah, dude, I I don't want to just sit behind my desk and just quietly age. Yeah, <laughs> she'll drive you nuts too, man. You gotta get out and have some fun sometimes, you know. There's a bunch that's, of fucking artists still, man. There's a lot. Yeah, but uh, yeah. So that's. All I got for Judas Priest. And uh it was actually a fun show. I had a blast doing it. Oh hell yeah, man. About different stuff. Yeah, I love looking at all the covers, you know, and just looking at the process, whether if it's a photograph, oh that was a photograph, or oh, that was a mixed multimedia, oh, that was a dope ass painted piece, you know. I don't know. There's just a lot to unpack from all the different covers, you know. Personally, I like the yeah. painted ones and just like the hand the handmade ones, you know. But I, I you know, it's fun going through the the discography, you know. And, if we have I like doing that too. But I'm I'm glad we stumbled upon Mark Wilkinson's work. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. I think that do. that's cool because we got to see like his progression from doing traditional all the way to digital, like dabbling oh, yeah, into digital yeah. for his last few albums. Yeah. You know? Do you like you like digital at all? Some digital, but you know, early on I, I was amazed by digital. It's like, oh my god, this is so cool, you know? Yeah. And then so I learned how to do it, and I realized like these guys are spending like fucking like, hours behind their desk. Like I'm not talking like a couple of hours. Like these dudes are spending like thirty or forty hours doing one piece. You know? Yeah, because you can zoom in and keep zooming in, right? Yeah, but when you little, print like, it, you can't. Shit. You're not going to see any of that. Shit, you know what right? I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like, there was this video I, I seen. Oh, sorry. No, no. Keep. Go ahead. Well, there was this video I seen where some dude drew a mouth and then inside that mouth was another mouth and then it would go down an esophagus and then another one. Like, you just keep, could keep zooming in with digital art and none yeah. of that, like, it kept going and going and going, kept zooming into mouths upon mouths upon mouths. It just kept, kept traveling esophaguses, right? I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but it was just going down an esophagus trail of mouths, right? Um, you could probably see it on Instagram or fucking Twitter or somewhere on YouTube, but none of that is visual. Like, you can't no. see that if you're going to print it in a comic book. 
So it's well, just like, like I even might find myself now, like as a greenhorn, stepping back and looking like, dude, a step, take, like literally put the thing on the table and walk back from it and look at it. You know what I mean? And then, okay, now put it in the mirror, you know, yeah. <laughs> like look at it that way. And, um, uh, is it going to print? Is it read? You know, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like the shit never prints. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're never going to see that. You know what I'm, <laughs> He just wasted like a month doing all of that. You see what I'm saying? And nobody, and nobody's paying him to do like all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like you give me a month. I can do shit where you can see one person inside the other all the way down to infinity. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like Dante the Inferno. there's a good possibility. Like he probably never drew every part of that. He probably copied, paste, copy, oh, paste, yeah. copy, paste, just blended it in. That's true. And when I did digital, like digital was fun. I, I ain't gonna lie to you. But one thing yeah. I did learn is that everybody has access to the same brushes and the same techniques, and they all use the same technique to go ahead and get their point across. Mm. And a buddy was like, I was talking to another friend of mine, and he loves doing digital, right? He does both. Mm. But and he had an argument argument with me because I'm like, no, dude, like <laughs> if I want to do a watercolor piece, yeah, like you're not what the hell is going on with my camera. <laughs> it's just blurred out all of a sudden it's crazy it's focusing on something else that's crazy dude like anyway <laughs> the hell on let me turn it on turn it back off oh yeah anyway he um yeah he uh so we had an argument because i was like yeah dude well if i want to do a watercolor piece because i told him i said if you like he did a book it was called um fucking some it was a zombie western right oh that's dope yeah and he did it digitally in his mm -hmm. in his traditional style this is fucking crazy the fuck and Maybe um if you, if you leave the stream and come back like 30 seconds or 20 seconds it might fix it yeah let me do that hold on one second i'll be right back <laughs> oh there it is it's fixed well he's talking about uh oh, there the, it goes okay bam done well anyway like he was um like we had a we had a little bit of an argument because I was like yeah. I was like, dude, why don't you do the whole book in your in your traditional style? That way you would be able to sell the pages, you know? Yeah, sell the pages, yeah. And then because uh, I told him I said, I like your traditional style better not like your your mm -hmm. your digital. Yeah. And he was like, and I said, and then we got into talk about digital, and I said, Well, if I want to do like a watercolor, you know, like you can't easily re reproduce that digitally. Yeah. And he's like, Something Oh, yes, like you can. Little. He's like, yes, you can. I was like, there's no way you'd be able to produce that easily. He's like, oh yeah, there's brushes out there. I'm like, yeah, but everybody's using the same brushes. You know yeah, I'm saying like, like it's yeah. not as simple as just like for me. If I want to, I'll just do it. And all the imperfections in it, all the imperfections yeah. I put in a piece, or just adds to the piece. You know, there's so many hairs, dude. Like one hair and bristles, like groupings of, of bristles that are going to go this way. That there's so microcosmic exactly. that like you can't reproduce that digitally. Yeah, and that's what we were talking about because I know, like, when I did digital, yeah, there's ways of doing digital where it looks like watercolor, but you're mm -hmm. using all the same brushes everybody else is using, and then you have to do yeah. layer upon layer upon layer to go and get it yeah. to look like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I, I just, so yeah, I mean, I could do a watercolor piece in less than an hour, right? That's fucking dope. Like a quick one, you know, nothing like yeah. super detailed or anything like that. That's but for dope, you to duplicate bro. that same watercolor piece digitally, you're going to be working on it for maybe 16 hours, 10 to 16 hours, 10 hours at the lead. Even if you yeah. worked on it five hours, that's still way too long. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. And then I can sell the original. Can you sell the original? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Or you could leave it for your like family or your kids or something. You know what I mean? Exactly. Worst case scenario. Like, here you go, dude, go buy a steak or something. You know what I mean? Well, you know, Another thing, I th like Alex Ross makes a killing, dude, because he corners oh, yeah. the market in original art, you know, because there yeah, is no market yeah. for original art when it comes to comics. Yeah, you know? dude, he's got that fucking, he's he's just, he's on a, he's an, he's one of those anomalies like you and Jason in the chat. He's one of those visionaries like you and Jason in the chat um, where yeah, he can just, you know. there's no, there's no one like him out there. Um, and he's like, I mean, who, who do you, who do you really compare him to? Nobody, right? You could say I Norman Rockwell. the reason Rockwell, why there's. There's not a lot of people oh. like him because his style isn't super, super complex. He's just doing watercolors, right. like straight watercolors. And models, models and really good reference. Yeah. But he, um, I, I think there's not a lot of people like him because like people are so obsessed with digital, like they're not willing to go ahead and learn how to do the shit the right way. The, the traditional way. Let's put it that way. 
Yeah. To me, I would think if you're going to do digital, maybe you should learn traditional first and then move on to digital. You know, that way you that can you you know how to do it by hand. Because what if your computer breaks? You know what I'm saying, right. or yeah, dude, you you know, I can't terrifying. deliver it now. My computer's burnt. Oh, I ran out that's of memory. Just, you know, to me, that's terrifying, bro. Like, I don't know. Like, I'd, I'd rather I'd rather have all the original pieces. You know what I mean? Then exactly. Have, like, have it in have yeah. like a, have it in a fucking flash drive or a computer you know i don't know i really have no, these no, big motherfuckers right. <laughs> you know what i mean I'm, i'll take my chance eventually pirate. yeah eventually i'm gonna have to have a sale because i got like 80 pages of doc alpha <laughs> yeah <laughs> that has to go oh but, i love me some doc alpha man i love that character um yeah and, yes traditional right. should always be learned first I also, Absolutely. It also helps you, you know? your digital, or helps you with digital work. Yeah. 100%. Do you do any digital work? Or you do everything. I do everything traditional except for for colors. And then with colors, I'm trying to like go like flats as fuck. Like I, I want to go like extremely flat, and then just add like lighting, and that's about it. You know, like sunlight, and then maybe if it's the moonlight, something like that, and just keep it like that, dude. Uh, really, really basic shit. Because I don't, and then I'm gonna yeah. go in there and just keep the the inks, dude. You know what I mean? And if there's pencils in there, then try to find a way to keep the pencils intact. You know what I mean? Maybe yeah. a couple spatter, spatter fucking layers in there, you know, for like walls and things like that. And just random little like textures and shit, mostly spatter and then turn them down. So you can't the opacity and the levels and whatnot. So you can't see them, but still like really basic. Cause I'm really into the line work. Um, but my prior work now, nah, I was, I was just fucking experimenting and shit like that a lot, trying to learn stuff. I had this. DVD, yeah. But you see, uh, that's, experiments that's how you learn like being fearless yeah. whenever you experiment like don't be scared you know like just jump yeah. in first and that's just get doing. all <laughs> who said i think it was neil adams he yes. said just get yeah, all did. the bad art out you know oh, yeah as much he, as bad art out as you can while shit you're it all out you yeah and, and mike Barron says the same thing about writing like dude you have to shit all that bad writing out like it has yeah. to come out because you have to learn somehow. Like you're not going to just yeah. start out at the top. Of you. This isn't the Karen no. game. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. <laughs> no way, dude. So like that's, you know, I got the, how to color the spawn way by Brian Haberlin. So I tried to just study that and learn as fast as I could. You know what I mean? And just try to pick apart what I could and start working on my, my butch cleaver. <laughs> and then I just did full yeah. force. I could have, you know, I try not to spend too much time on one thing, you know, you do that though you could really hone your craft in one area one arena you know that's but absolutely true could, could 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 come but right, at the, right now at the moment i'm really into just black and white art dude uh just it's not wrong with that either like um in, that's it for at the moment one thing the i like year. about uh like chris graves um his work is very similar to uh todd mcfarland's you know and I kind of like, I think it's okay because there's not a lot of people that can do Todd McFarlane, you know? Yeah. But I'm not really a huge fan of Todd, Todd McFarlane's work, you know? But I think as far as Chris's work, like Chris pulls it off like expertly. One yeah, thing Chris I do is, like about, nope. yeah, yeah. One thing I like about Chris's work though is that Chris can do both. He can do traditional and he can do digital, you know? Mm -hmm. And his his traditional work looks a lot like his digital. So it's not, it's not a big leap between the two, you know? Yeah. Um, and like when I was doing traditional work, one thing I, I can tell you right now, I mean, digital work, like I wasn't working on a Cintiq. I was working on a Wacom pad, you know? Oh, yeah. So I was looking at the screen and drawing down here, you know? Mm -hmm. And that threw my eye hand coordination off completely. Oh, <laughs> oh, like yeah, I was like, I would draw and I'd be like, oh, this doesn't look right. This feels very uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. It was nuts, dude. Like, so that's another reason why I quit because I was like, number one, I think a lot of comic artists is they're not making a lot of money right now because they're not selling the originals. They're only relying on what Marvel and DC is paying them. You know? Yeah. And if they get commissions at shows, then they'll they'll get so that. But Dude, you have to, that's part of the game too. That's part of your income is going ahead and, and selling those original pieces. You know? Hell yeah, man. Um, yeah. You got to do I that, think, man. I think maybe we should end this. For sure, man. Get ready for next week when we do, I don't know, what do you think we're going to do next week? Do Maiden, we dude. We don't have to. We can do Maiden. We can do Slayer. We can do 
The Slayers got some really interesting artwork on their oh, stuff, yeah, they do. too, dude. So does, yeah, Cannibal, you, so does Cannibal Corpse. Yeah, Cannibal Corpse, Slayer, Danzig. Mm -hmm. Dude, there's so many. We're just going to do a big raffle and see who we got. There's so many. I guess we'll just figure it out. Yeah. This we'll is figure it out. We'll throw some fucking... Cradle of Filth. Cradle of Filth. <laughs> like, there's, a, there's a bunch, dude. There's, there's a whole lot, a lot of, you know. Hey, thanks, Unhinged. Jason. That's Jason, right? Yep. Jason Baskin right there. Jason Baskin. All right. Yeah, I'm going to end it. See you guys later. Peace. You're staying uncomfortable moment.